What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, we're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 14th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I have here on my watch list and talking about some interesting news that we got this morning regarding retail sales data. So for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow. And I appreciate every single one of you out there more than you know for watching these videos, subscribing to the content, and of course, hitting that like button. So without further ado, let's talk about what ended up happening today, the 14th of February in the overall stock market. We can see the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest traded publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing the day today red down about $7.30 down around 0.27%. The Dow Jones, the Dow 30 ended up closing the day down as well down about $103 here down around 40 or 0.41% at the close and the NASDAQ is the only one that ended up closing the day green. This is the future guys which is showing that we're headed down after market hours, but at the close about 10 minutes ago, we were up around $6 in terms of the NASDAQ. Really no movement, you know, towards the end of the day, really at a break-even price compared to yesterday's closing price. So overall today, guys, you know, we saw a really uh, strong push to the downside this morning due to that retail sales data that we're going to be talking about a couple in a couple of minutes here. And from there, guys, we were able to, you know, end up pushing back up in terms of the major markets. And we can see that here, you know, in the morning, literally the NQ, the NASDAQ dropped about 70 points, then we ended up pushing back up for the latter half of the day. Same exact thing here with the Dow Jones, guys. We ended up gapping down pretty heavily, recovered nicely towards the end of the day. And the SPX, we gapped down strong on that retail sales news. And then we ended up closing the day pretty strong on a nice little upswing here. So let's talk about some, you know, closer technicals on all of these major indices so we can get a better understanding of where the markets are pushing, guys, because getting an understanding of the entire markets, the SPX, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, this is going to help us determine what we're going to be trading for that day, right? Are we going to be trading, you know, bear ETFs? Are we going to be trading large cap stocks? Are we going to be going long on large cap stocks? You know, understanding the trend, understanding where the overall markets are pushing, it's going to help us tremendously with these decisions. So you all know by now, that, you know, from the end of 2018, we've been up extremely nice in the SPX and quite frankly, the entire market, right? We've been up around 15% from the bottoming out point here, you know, in the SPX, right? You can see that there. The NASDAQ, I believe, is a bit higher. We're up around 16% and the Dow Jones is right there up around 15%. And we've seen, you know, along the way here, We've had healthy pullbacks and continuations of uptrend patterns by, you know, making higher lows and higher highs, right? This is all evident here based on this chart. And to be quite frank with you guys, you know, we are getting towards major resistances here in the SPX. One that we talked about in yesterday's video was at around 2795 the next one being at around 28.15, and if we eventually break out of these resistances, we're going to be headed back potentially to these all-time highs, which I personally think is not going to happen, guys, because we got some really big news today regarding retail sales, the economy slowing down in general, these trade war talks. It's kind of hard for me to really wrap my head around uh, us getting all the way back to all-time highs which is around another 8 9%, actually around right around 6 7% higher from where we are right now. You know, if we do end up pushing there guys, 
I'm going to be pretty, pretty surprised, but you know, anything can really happen in the stock market, but I personally just don't think that is going to happen. But to take a look at some closer term trends here, guys, judging on this 30 day, 30 minute chart here, we can see this channel that we've been trading in over the past couple of weeks. And we've been talking about this channel a lot over these past couple of videos, right? We can clearly see the support of the channel where we got, you know, Bounce where we bounced above once, twice, three times here, you know, four times back here towards the middle of January, and the resistance of this channel that we topped off at here back in the middle of January, here towards the beginning of February. And this could be the next potential top that we saw two days ago on the 12th of February, guys. And you know, we're trading in this channel, higher highs, higher lows. The uptrend is very nice, and it's honestly looking like we're not pulling back whatsoever in terms of these technicals. But what I want to tell you guys, and what I want to you know jam into your heads here, is that this uptrend might not be done quite yet based on these technicals. Sure, we did not get above this resistance today. Pretty much two straight days of struggling to get above 2760 but we saw similar price movement a couple of weeks ago or rather last week at this point or two weeks ago rather where we had two days of consolidation where we could have potentially pulled back but we ended up pushing up more towards the top of this channel so what i'm saying here guys is that you know we could potentially be pushing back up here just because we've seen two straight days of consolidation right around here and because we are in the middle of the channel not quite yet at the top so i do still see some upside here in the spx let's say tomorrow we do end up pushing up above let's say 2760 that's going to be a good sign that we're breaking that resistance and continuing the uptrend towards the top of the channel with a goal potentially at around 2780 for the SPX. But of course, you know, if we do get rejected here, if we have trouble getting past this resistance at around 2760 and we end up selling back, you know, closer to that 50 SMA, that's going to be a very close, you know, uh, or very important sign rather, or, you know, indication of are we going to break this resistance or support rather? Are we going to break this and then break the channel, right? Which is going to be a good sign that we are reversing pattern to the downside, right? Because we can see the support on this channel is very strong. And if we break that, that's going to be a huge break of pattern to the downside, really signifying more potential selling in the overall stock market. So tomorrow, guys, I'm waiting to see, are we breaking out of this resistance to continue the uptrend? Are we going to end up pushing down here, maybe back into the 2730s and test that 50 SMA support as well as this trend line support here for the channel? It's going to be very interesting to see you know, where we're going to end up heading in terms of the SPX, guys. So, you know, in terms of some longer term resistances here, we're still playing with that 180 SMA resistance here on the one year, one day chart. On this three year chart, we're playing with the 50 SMA resistance as well. All critical points for the SPX that you should be keeping an eye on every single day to see, you know, where we could potentially be headed in terms of the index. So the Dow Jones today, guys, you know, very similar to the SPX. We were trading in that channel over these past couple of days with major resistances coming up at around $25,750. The next one being at around $26,000. $200. And if we're judging on this closer term chart here, the 30 day, uh, 30, is this a 30 day, 30 minute, 90 minute, 30 day, 90 minute chart, we can see this channel as well, just like the SPX, right? We can see the support of this channel. We can see the resistance of this channel. Nice higher lows, nice higher highs. The uptrend is still 100% intact. But the past two days, We've been seeing some resistance, some consolidation right around the $25,500 mark in terms of the Dow Jones, guys. So what are we going to end up doing tomorrow? Are we going to pull back and potentially bounce on the support of this channel and the 50 SMA and, you know, potentially head back up? Or are we going to break this, which is going to be a huge, huge pattern, huge reversal pattern to the downside, which could trigger and signify more selling to come 
in the overall Dow Jones. But right now, guys, at the time that I'm recording this video, you know, the SPX and the Dow, they are both trading in this channel still. They are both uptrending in price, with tomorrow being a very, very critical day, uh, you know, for the major indexes, indices, and, you know, the overall stock market. And another, and another thing to keep an eye on here, guys, is this previous resistance, which is now a new support for the Dow at around 25000 Four hundred dollars, which is which it does seem we were holding above today. So if we do end up breaking that here, guys, breaking that to the downside, that could be the first step to potentially testing the fifty SMA support and this channel support here. And of course, like I said, if we break that, that could trigger some more selling for the Dow Jones. So taking a look here uh, at the end to the Nasdaq Composite Tech Heavy Indice right here. We're trading in that same exact channel, just like the Dow, just like the SPX, with major resistances coming up at $7,100, and the next one being at around $7,250. And we can see here today, guys, over these past two days, we've been seeing some strong resistance at around $7,065, which could indicate the potential top here in the NQ future in the NQ indice here, guys. And we can see, you know, we do have some more potential room to the upside, but for us to continue to the upside to potentially test the top of that channel, we're going to have to see if the NQ ends up breaking above 70, 60, 70, 70, you know, this, this, uh, this resistance here signified by that trend line that I just ended up drawing for you guys today. So, you know, not much different movement from what we covered in yesterday's video. So I don't really want to spend too much time talking about the major indices. Just know we are at critical points in the Dow and the SPX and of course in the NASDAQ. Are we going to break to the upside and continue the uptrend or are we going to end up breaking the supports on these 20 day one hour charts for the major indices which could signify more selling to come it's going to be very interesting guys especially with the trade war deadline coming up it's going to be an interesting time over these next two three weeks in the stock market and there's a lot of implications out there that could end up sending the stocks the indices down in price and of course if we get good news you know trade war comes to an agreement right trump and china come to an agreement you know we could get some optimism, some short-term push to the upside in the stock market. You know, a lot of things could end up happening where we are right now. So let's talk about what I traded today very quickly before we talk about some retail sales data that I find very interesting that we got this morning that really sent the stocks down. When we saw that this morning, guys, the stocks were down, the futures were down. This ended up uh, opening my eyes to my trade this morning, and I ended up trading today TVIX. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is an ETF that trades based upon the SPX. And whenever the SPX is going up in price, you know, TVIX is selling off. But of course, when the SPX is selling off, TVIX is going up in price. And we can see here, guys, on the five day, five minute chart, just how crazy. TVIX went up today and we can see, you know, this this big spike here signified the sell off in the SPX and the VIX actually was going pretty crazy this morning as well from around 1550 all the way up to around $17. And for those of you guys that don't know what the VIX is, it pretty much shows us uh, you know, the volatility in the stock market, right? We can see here it's called CBOE market volatility index. And just to put it in very simple terms, whenever the markets are very volatile, the VIX is popping up. Hence why in, you know, towards the end of December, right after that bloody month of December, the VIX was up all the way to $36. And if we can take a look back 20 years, the VIX was at $90 back in 08 during the Great Recession which was obviously a very volatile time with a lot of red in the overall stock market. But anyway, guys, talking about my trade in TVIX, we saw that initial push up here. I tried to get in pre-market hours, did not end up getting filled for some odd reason. I literally tried to get in at 9.26 a.m. this morning, right before market open on the anticipation of more selling once the market opened, which is exactly what ended up happening. But 
I didn't get filled. So what I ended up doing is I wanted to wait for the first pullback that we got in TVIX. And that happened right here, guys. We can see I tried getting filled right around here. I would have made a pretty solid profit if I got filled and sold off very quickly, which was my personal plan here. I did not get filled. We ended up selling off back down to this 50 SMA support. And this is what I was waiting for, that initial push pullback to get in to TVIX. And of course, we can see here, guys, at around 940, 10 minutes into the market, we can see what was going on with the SPX, right? We ended up selling off heavily. We got that pushback all the way up to around 27.38 at around 940. And we got rejected by the EMA and we slowly started to make lower highs, which really indicated some more downside to come, which is where I ended up getting in to TVIX for a very quick little 1.4%, I believe, or 1.5% scalp trade off the bounce here on the 50 SMA from around, I believe, 36.54 I got in, up around 1.4, up 1.5%, which put us right at that resistance from the previous pump up at around 9.30 a.m., right at the beginning of the market. And I wanted to sell here, guys, pretty much because we filled that entire gap that we ended up pulling back from right we can see the pop up to 37.20 the pullback opened up that margin and the whole idea here was to profit on this comeback and I ended up selling right here at that resistance which really ended up working out right you know in line with my plan which doesn't always happen guys right but today ended up being one of those days where it did end up working out exactly to my favor so that is one trade I made today in TVIX, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. And let's talk about now very quickly what ended up happening with the retail sales. And I do have my phone here. I'm going to be pulling up some notes and talking about what ended up happening today. And honestly, guys, this news that we got signifies the strength of our economy. If sales are at the lowest they've been in years, this does signify a pretty uh, weak economy. Well, not really a weak economy, rather a weakening economy, right? So let's go over some of these, you know, major numbers that I do have here. So retail sales sank 1.2% in December, which was the largest drop since the end of the Great Recession in 2009. So pretty much, guys, 1.2% drop is pretty much the biggest drop in the past 10 years that just happened right now. This pretty much shows proof that the economy is slowing down, right? We saw another big drop actually in gas station sales, which I think is pretty unique because gas prices have actually been pretty low. I don't know about you guys, but where I'm from in New Jersey, you know, gas right now for regular, I believe it's like $2.15 for a gallon. And it, a couple months back, it was like, like 280 290 and about a year ago it was at three dollars so gas prices are low but we saw a 5.1 percent drop in sales at gas stations which is just honestly mind-boggling to me we saw a 3.9 percent decline in sales from internet sellers such as amazon such as ebay which again pretty surprising there guys the growth or not the, really the growth of the companies the uh you know, the sales are slowly starting to slow down, really showing that customers out there, people in the economy aren't really, you know, buying as much stuff as they used to, right? Maybe back in 2012 when the economy was in the straight bull run, you know, people were buying stuff. It's not like it was back then, right? We also saw which is kind of expected here, a 3.3% drop in sales at brick and mortar stores such as Macy's, Kohl's and Nordstrom guys so we got some drop in sales and internet sellers of course the brick and mortar stores that have been doing poorly over the past couple of years we saw a drop in them and of course in the gas station sales so these are pretty interesting numbers guys and you know the stock market did not react positively to this hence why we sold off pretty heavily this morning and I was able to capitalize on that TVIX trade but what do you guys think about this, right? Do you think this is pretty significant to an economic slowdown, the U.S. economy slowing down, the global economy slowing down? What do you guys think about this? Drop a comment down below. I would love to hear your opinion and we can chat about it 
down below in the comments section. So let's talk about very briefly here some other stocks that ended up moving down, some other ones that ended up doing very well today, and that I see potential in over these next couple of days. So let's start off talking about Tesla, guys. This is a stock that I was swing trading. I ended up cutting my losses yesterday. Took about a 1.2, 1.3% loss in Tesla. We ended up getting rejected by this 180 SMA here. Uh, yesterday in Tesla, I believe, or the day before. And now, honestly, guys, it's looking like it's descending in price because it didn't break above here, which would have been a very big break of pattern to the upside. And honestly, based off these technicals, guys, we do see further potential selling off in terms of Tesla stock. So Tesla stock, they do have a deadline to be at a certain price point. I forget from the top of my head right now, or else they owe about $900 million. I know some of you guys watching out there, you guys know what I'm talking about right now. But this is not looking too good for Tesla because their stock price needs to be at around 350 I believe. Was it 350 or 360 or they have to pay that debt? Let me know down below in the comment section. But, you know, it's not looking too good, guys. You know, Tesla stock literally has to run up like 15% for it to get to 350 which is that price point. Not looking too good right now in terms of uh, Tesla stock. But we see, you know, we are getting rejected. Not looking like we're pushing back up in terms of Tesla stock. Another runner we had today was in TNDM. This is a very popular stock. A lot of people talk about it. A lot of people trade this stock. And we can see today it's up around 6.6%. We ended up consolidating for two days in a row. This was a bullish, not really a bullish move, but a consolidation. And of course, we saw the break above $47 today, which was the old resistance, which was a bullish move. And we ended up seeing it run an extra $2.00 roughly from that break of this resistance. So guys, I'm taking a look at TNDM here for a potential pullback tomorrow to see if it's going to able or if, if it's going to, you know, be able to hold this old resistance as a new support and potentially test the $50 price point. So that's what I'm looking at <coughs> excuse me in terms of uh TNDM. Another one that we saw did very well today was UWT, guys. We saw crude oil today pull back pretty drastically, opening up a nice margin of profit on UWT, and crude oil did another one of those gap fills again today, right? And we can see, you know, strong resistance at around 54.70. We ended up pulling back all the way to $53, opening up that margin on UWT, and we filled that gap very beautifully. So did anyone end up day trading uh, UWT today. I personally did not. I missed the move. And uh, we can see exactly what we see here, guys, right? It's like a U pattern. We ended up dipping down, opening up that margin of profit, sell selling off to around $13. We found the bottom here, the double bottom, the reversal back up to the upside. And this would have been a good entry point right here, especially when the 50 SMA crossed above the 180 SMA, which is a very bullish sign that we take an eye out and keep an eye out for in terms of entering positions. And we can see once that ended up happening, right, momentum was swinging towards UWT's favor and we ended up riding it up all the way back to the pre-market resistance at around $14.30. So tomorrow guys I'm going to be keeping an eye are we going to break above $14.30 to continue to run up on this uptrend pattern that we've been on over these past couple of days and eventually test that $15 resistance. I'm very interested to see if that is going to happen. And uh, another one that's looking pretty good right now for a potential swing trade is Cron Kronos Group. We are seeing here that it does seem to be on a higher high, higher low pattern over these past three days. But keep an eye for this resistance at around $21.50. If we do end up breaking that, it's going to be a very bullish move to the upside. And we could end up running back up to $25 again, guys. Who knows? These marijuana stocks, we all know this by now. They're extremely volatile. They can run 15% in a day. No problem. They can also drop 15% in a day. No problem. So honestly, I can see it running back up pretty soon here, to be honest, guys, based on a technical basis. And if we're judging here on the 180, 
four hour chart. It does look like it's maintaining the uptrend pattern here. We see a double bottom at around $19. We see the break above the 50 SMA here on the 180. And of course, that resistance that we just talked about, it needs to be broken above before really testing those previous highs at around $24, $25. So another one, EA today, guys, it's still pushing up. What I want to see for a potential breakout is to see EA break above 105. If it does, that could be a technical indicator that we're going to break out and see more bullish move, uh, more bullish signs in terms of uh, EA. Also, keep an eye on this 107 resistance, guys. If we break that 107 resistance, we could be running back up to about 111, which was a previous support a couple of months back here, back in uh, September. So keep an eye, guys. These are all levels that could 100% be hit in terms of EA stock. And another one, the last one we're going to be talking about today is Gush, ticker symbol G-U-S-H. This is an inverse ETF that trades based upon XOP. And whenever XOP is going up in price, guys, Gush is going up in price. So we see here a potential bullish move on XOP, we see the low at about $23, the next low at about $28. And if we break this downwards trending pattern here of lower highs, this could be a very nice breakout move to the upside for XOP, opening up a pretty solid margin on uh, Gush, guys. So take a look. It's trading in this channel right here pretty much, right? If we break out of here, that's going to be a huge bullish move. But if we get rejected, really that's going to be a good move for Drip, which is the inverse to Gush, guys. So keep an eye on XOP. What way are we going to go? Are we going to break out the bullish move, which means we're going to trade Gush? Or are we going to break below here, start to go down, and trade Drip, which of course is the bear ETF here that goes up whenever XOP is selling off? So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. Do your own research, guys. This is the most important thing. Do not trade anything based off of my opinion. That is super important so you can become a self-sufficient trader and investor over time. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out. Have a great night.